Hello everyone. So welcome back to my channel. So now it's time to do the third question of lead code weekly challenge. So basically this question when I first encountered then I thought that this question is somehow similar question which I had done before. Actually this is the question similar to that burn leaf question. Means at one, but that burn leaf question was like that we were burning the leaf uh, from one leaf node and then how much time it will take to burn all the leaves. But somehow it is similar to that but somehow it is also similar to one more question uh, which is being there for doing multi source dfs that is that uh, rotten oranges question in which we are starting from one point and all the oranges which would be just surrounded by that particular orange that would be rotten at that particular minute so this is somehow similar to that question also so just a combination of two question but it is more preferred towards that rotten orange question so that's why in this particular tree which is being given to us we will convert this tree into a graph and after this particular is converted into a graph then it becomes a question of that rotten orange is question only so basically first point here would be that we would be converting this question into a graph and after converting this question to the graph we would be then taking we directly traversing it that whatever are the adjacent nodes at that particular point of time at that particular point of time they would be turned into the you know, infectious nodes and then after that at the next minute we will take that what are the next nodes which are being there which are required to be infected and then after that the other next nodes basically uh, when we are one minute let me turn it on actually it got off hmm. so basically what i'm saying is that at one minute when we are at this particular moment then the node which is surrounded are these two right so when it would be a graph then the two these three nodes would be adjacent to this right so that's why at this moment means at the one itself we would be getting these two uh means these three nodes are infected means when it comes out to be two here if we take at zero and then at the one minute when it happens the one minute then these nodes would get infected then after that here there is no node uh, means there is no node here and there is no node here right but there is one node here so at the 2 minute this will get infected at the 3 minute this will get infected at the 4 minute this will get infected right so like this at the end we are getting the answer as 4 so this is thing which we are required to do in this particular question but yeah i just directly explained you the question because uh, when i saw this diagram and read the that and somehow just uh came to the question then i just thought that yeah this is similar to that question so let me first uh, go through from the question you are given root of a binary tree with unique values and integer start at minute 0 and infection starts from node with the value start so this is thing which is being given to us all the values are unique no duplication is there and the there is one start node which is being given to us from where the infection starts and each minute a node becomes infected is the node is currently uninfected and the node is adjacent to an infected node so the thing is that node is currently uninfected then only it will get effect, infected else it is already infected so it won't be counted into our answer but there would be only one node given to us which is infectious so and that would be the start node and the node adjacent to the infected node will become the infected node so basically by this first line they wanted to say that uh, when in this we were there right so in these all these became infected so now when all these became infected then at the next minute we are not affecting any of these but these will affect the other adjacent nodes so that's the thing which they wanted to convey and at the end we are required to return the minimum number of not the minimum number but the number of minutes because there is no minimum in this no maximum in this we are just going ahead with the flow that what are the next nodes which are there coming up and then they will get infected so that's the thing which we are go- doing here so in the first example i already explained you that how they were getting infected means all the adjacent one got infected but if you think if we do any sort of dfs in the same or dfs in the same on the tree right so would we able to come up with a solution because then we do dfs or dfs on a tree so it is in just one direction and then in the back tracking part in the dfs portion it comes back to from there it got started 
but here the node is also different means a root you can better say that the starting node where the infection is starting that is here acting as a root node from where we are required to start for a traversal of the tree so that's why it would be better to convert this particular tree into a graph in actual a tree is already a graph only but the graph has some more properties than tree but still a means the tree is you can see the sub part of a graph so that's how we can easily convert this tree into a graph after creating the undirected edges in the same or even the directed edges in the same but the thing is why we are creating an undirected graph in the same because we don't uh, because we require to move from infect uh, from parent to child and child to parent both would be the same case because you can see in this three we are moving to the parent uh, moving to the child right and this is also the child and also we are moving to the parent that is one right so in that context only we are required to make a undirected graph so that would be our first part making our undirected graph and then after making the graph we are required to traverse into this graph from the starting point that is from the three which is being given in our present example right so first point would be making the graph and the other point would be traversing the same so that traversal is our choice that either we want to do a bfs traversal or dfs traversal that completely our choice but here the thing is that bfs dfs both will work in the same so that's why uh, presently i am just going ahead with the bfs type of this particular so i'll show you the bfs code so let's go ahead and start with the bfs code here so in this first i will show you Uh, yeah, the constraints which are there because it is a tree given to us, right? And even when we are making the graph, so the constraints are in such a manner that it will won't give us any sort of tree because in the graph also we are traversing all ten to power five order of anything would be there, or at max it would be e plus b because of the adjacency list, right? And even the space complexity that would also be e plus b that is the number of edges which are there and the nodes which are there. so that's why it will already be bounded inside these constraints only no tle would be there <clears throat> and the node value because we are not adding up them right so uh, we are not concerned with the node value and even we are not concerned with whether it is negative or positive so now let us go ahead with making of this particular graph so here the traversal i am doing and here i am making of this particular graph so now for this particular graph i am taking an unordered map for our adjacency list so that we could easily look up in the same we could have also used a vector of vector that would also have worked but here taking unordered map make it easy for look up and so on so that's why i have taken that so here in the first the value of that particular node would be stored and the corresponding edges which are being connected to the same that would be stored in this vector of int so that's what i'm taking here and now creating this graph but before creating the graph let me show you that how we are going ahead so here we are directly calling our create graph function so here our graph would be created and then returned and when it get returned then we would be doing the bfs on this particular for calculating our time that's the thing which we would be doing here so now let us uh, let me show you that how we are creating this graph so here we are basically creating an undirected graph by using the bfs method of creating the graph so what we are doing is we are, here we have taken a queue and queue is also in the pair form pair type so first we are having that particular tree node and corresponding to its value that we are having here so at the first time we will be pushing that root the first node which is there and its corresponding value we are taking the minus 1 basically here it basically stands for the um, means what is the parent value for the thing and the root won't be having any parent right because root itself is a parent and then we would be going ahead for making our graph so here and this is for this whole means this particular or uh, this whole while loop that now we are having something in our queue right so then first thing which we would be doing is we will be checking node and the parent from this particular queue right so root node will be, uh, will be checked out and it will be popped out from the queue and then we will check the parent is basically stored into this particular portion that is this minus 1 so we will check that if it is not minus 1 at the root point it would be minus 1 only because root don't have any parent right so if, if 
that is the criteria then we won't be going to this particular loop for making our graph but we would be going in this because it is a tree so surely that parent would be having a left child and right child right so that's why we would be ch checking for this particular nodes left child and right child and then we will be pushing those left child and right child as it is and the node value and the node value is basically here the value of the root which is there and that is the parent of this left and the right child right so that's why we will be pushing that into the thing and then we uh, now our queue is still not empty right so that's why again we will be going ahead and in the now we will be setting out our second node which is there earlier it was root now our left child would be at the first and that we will be setting out and for the left child we will be getting a root as the parent so that's why here we will be uh, entering this condition because there is value won't be minus and it would be something right and here even this minus one uh, from that particular constraint also if that there is a constraint but not given as uh, that the value of the node are post all positive then surely here it for the for this particular what we say um for this root rather than taking as minus 1 we would have been required to take int max that would be the same here so that's why that particular is uh, helping us out means those constraints are helping us out so here you can check that if there is a parent right because left would be having a parent as root so in that criteria we will be directly pushing that node value which is there means the left value to the adjacency list of parent that is root is being connected to our left that we would be doing and the node value by taking the node value we will be pushing the parent value to the adjacency list of the node value and why we are doing so because here we are creating undirected graph so that's why we are pushing parent to the node and node to the parent both of the things we are doing here so that the thing which we are doing here so this was the part for creating a graph and this whole process would go on and the graph would be created completely an undirected graph now after the graph is being constructed now comes the part of taking out the time of from that particular graph and how we are doing that so here i am taking the method bfs rather than doing dss that also we can do but essentially bfs so here what we are we are doing for bfs we require q as the way we were requiring in that making of graph also so here also we are requiring a q in that we are pushing our values and then unordered map why we are taking this unordered map is for the fact that if we have already seen that particular node earlier then that would be marked as true or false if that has been seen so from there only we would be able to check that was it already infected or not so that's why we are taking this particular now we will be pushing that start node into our queue why we are pushing a start node not a root node just because of the fact because we are required to start our bfs from a start node so that's why we are pushing a start node to our queue that is the thing which we are doing here and then we will be marking that start node as seen equals to true just because of this fact and we are marking it as true and then after that in time equals to zero because it is starting our time is zero and then we are going ahead till the size of the third queue and then and then here we are basically checking for our time that uh, basically increasing our time rather than taking this for loop we would have been increasing this time here also means in this while loop because at each time uh, it would be increased only when a particular level is completely traversed so that's why you could have also taken that time at this particular position also then also it would have been worked but we are taking it here that would also work means the two method of doing the same thing and then we are taking the size of the queue that what is the present size of the queue and according to that size we would be running this loop for taking the same level of all the queue which are there and then here we are checking for node equals to queue dot front and queue dot pop basically we are checking for the first node and then after that what we are doing is we are checking that for i in that particular v of node means the whole adjacency list of that particular node that we are checking because at this moment after this means whatever node is being there we will be marking the machine pushing that particular to the queue so that other nodes which are being attached to that particular node they could also get infected 
and then we will marking that as that it is now already being visited and being infected so that's the thing which we are doing in this and after this all the nodes which are being attached to this node they would be completely infected now and then we would be going ahead with the other node which are being there in this particular queue and this is all which we will be doing all in the repetition form and thus we will be able to count the time and then at the end after exiting from that loop we will be returning time minus 1 why we are doing so and not returning direct time just because of the fact because we are not counting the starting node time you can clearly see in this particular example that the node time was starting from the zero right and the all other time which was there that was being counted but here when we would be doing this particular thing means the time plus plus from the starting also it is counting for the root time also so that's why at the end we are returning time minus 1 so this was all for this particular question so time complexity and the space complexity for the question is order of e plus v and same for the space complexity because of making up this graph and even traversing in this graph and then storing the same and the, yeah this was all for this particular question if there is any doubt you would comment that down and yeah this was all so and one more thing so basically as some of the students were asking from me about a well structured course and even where there are live one on one doubt session and mentorship one on one everything like these are there and even there is no upfront fees for the same means you are just required to pay for the fee after you have been placed by getting that course and and in the enrolling in the program and after place after that only you are getting place for the same into the companies which we which they provide which pay from 5 lpa to 40 lpa so after that only when you get place after the program then only you would be paying for the fees which is being there so if you want to get more about the details about the course you could directly head over to the description and in that the link is being given where you could found the, uh, find out the whole detail of the course so yeah this is all for Uh, this so thank you